Now, welcome back. We have been talking about uh, the issue of design of web pages. We have talked about HTML in the last few lectures, and we had also talked about that there are some other technologies uh, which have come up subsequently. This HTML is not the only way in which you can go ahead in time. There are other more powerful and more flexible solutions and languages which has come up. In today's lecture, we shall be taking up one such language for the purpose of discussion and this is extensive extensible markup language which is more commonly known by its acronym XML. So, first let us try to understand what is XML. See, we had seen HTML earlier. HTML is a language using which you can create the web pages. It is a markup language. Markup language means we specify the textual content of the document as well as we specify how the textual content should be structured or should be viewed on the screen. The concept of the tags and attributes come from there. So, this is what a markup language is. Now, XML like HTML is also a markup language. So, here lies a similarity. Let us see. So, XML is also a markup language. Well, although here we are we are talking about creating documents, we shall see later that XML has been used not only for creating document, but for many other application as well. There is some structured information that we can capture through tags like HTML. Markup language as you know is a markup language use of tags is a mechanism to identify structure. For example, a begin paragraph and end paragraph tag will tell you that well this is a paragraph in the document begin h1 end h1 will tell you that this is a heading in the document. So, these are structural information which you can extract. So, structure information will contain content which can be text which can be other form of information also image and also it would contain indication of what role the content plays. For example, I gave you some examples heading, paragraph, address. But one problem with HTML is that the set of tag is limited by the definition of HTML. If for example, I want to define a new tag for country, for city, I do not have it. But in XML, we can do it, we can define our own tags, we shall see it later. So, if you compare now XML and HTML, first thing is that both are markup languages. There are differences as I had mentioned. This HTML is a fixed language. The tag set and the meaning of the tags are predefined. They are fixed and you cannot change it. The browsers have been designed following these rules, even you cannot change it in the browser. You cannot tell the browser that will H2 tag you should display in italics in color red that you cannot tell the browser, you will have to modify the document itself in order to make this into effect. Uh, but in contrast, XML specifies neither a tag set nor semantics. XML is a totally open language and totally flexible language, it does not specify anything by default. Okay? depending on your application domain, your context, you will have to define everything and it is entirely up to you, you can customize XML as you want it to be. So, XML provides you the facility to define tags. It can allow you to define semantics, which can be defined by application. For example, this HTML means I repeat HTML is meant for creating documents, XML is meant for creating some content. This content is not only meant for viewing on the browser. 
there are a much wider range of applications of XML as we shall see some typical application later. The idea is like this, whatever you define in XML, you can write a program later maybe in C, C++, Java whatever that program can read that document and can process it. So, the application there will be of course, some application programming interfaces to, to, to extract the structured information from the XML specification and the semantics can be defined by the application that what a particular tag means that the application can define or can understand. So, XML is therefore, more like a meta language, it is not a fixed language which defines everything, rather it is a language using which you can describe markup language. For example, using XML you can define HTML, because HTML has a fixed set of tags, you can define all of them in HTML, in, uh, that means you can define all of them in XML and whatever you get is an HTML implementation using XML. Similarly, using XML you can do a host of other things, host lot of other things. Now, the primary development goals of XML if you look at it, you will understand a few things. The first was that initially it was meant to be used over the internet. So, the first goal was it should be easy to use over the internet. This, this also means that the browsers that we see around us, they should understand XML, there should be some compliance. Indeed, most of the modern browsers can understand XML. XML shall support a wide variety of application, this is a secondary objective. This application does not necessarily mean that only viewing the documents on the browser. Okay? It shall be easy to write programs that process XML documents. These are these applications which are running using XML specifications. The number of optional features in XML is kept to a minimum, ideally it is 0. See optional feature means if you look at the, at the HTML specification, you will find that some of the specifications were referred to as being mandatory, but some were said to be optional. And there was a problem with the optional specifications. Some browsers implemented some optional features, some other browsers implemented some other set of optional features. So, if you create a document using the optional features, there is no guarantee that all browsers can interpret it in a correct way. Okay? So, if there are no optional features at all, there would be no ambiguity. So, XML does or aims to do just that. Design of XML shall be formal and concise, it is so and it should be easy to create. There are many XML document editors available nowadays using which you can create XML documents. So, let us see how XML is defined. XML is defined broadly using three different specifications or specification languages whatever you call. The first is the basic XML specification, this is the extensible markup language version 1.0. This defines the syntax of XML, the language constructs how we have to, how you need to write the constructs in the language, the syntax. The second thing is, there is something called XML pointer language in short X pointer. XML linking language in short xlink, these are still undergoing some refinements. Now, this x pointer and xlink, these are some specifications or languages using which you can create something similar to hyperlinks as you create in HTML. The standard XML specification does not support hyperlink, you have to use xlink specification for that. So, this this xlink or x pointer, this defines standard ways to represent link between resources. And the third one is extensible style language or XSL. This is something similar to the HTML style sheet that we are discussing in the last class. 
Here you can define the standard style sheets and this language specifies how it means the exact format and syntax using which you can do that. The advantage of having Excel, XSL is obvious. Suppose your main application is to use the browser for viewing information, then you will be creating a style sheet XSL specifically for browser related definitions and syntax semantics whatever you call. Okay. So, how to compose paragraphs, headings, center, different kinds of alignments, fonts, etcetera. Okay, a very small example, an XML document looks like this. It starts with a beginning line, this is sometimes called an XML prologue. This tells you that this is an XML document. It begins with less than question mark followed by the keyword XML, version specifies which version of XML it is followed by end. And inside the XML, there can be several tags just like HTML, like quotation, begin quotation, end quotation, I say, end I say, you say, end you say. See, these tags look very peculiar. It is indeed peculiar, they were not part of the definition, I have defined it according to my need. This particular example I have taken maybe it is a portion or an excerpt from a dialogue that is going on between two persons, myself and you. So, the whenever I am enclosing some text between the tag I say, this means I am telling you something. Between you say means you are telling something. There can be a large number of alternates I say and you say in the total document. That will consider the whole conversation that I am calling quotation, you can call it something else also. In XML, in some cases you may have a pair of tags with nothing in between, it is called an empty tag. There is a way to specify an empty tag, it is like this, the name of the tag followed by slash. This is of course, equivalent to begin from end frown. So, instead of writing this frown twice, I can simply write frown followed by slash. This will mean that it is the frown tag, but it is presently empty, nothing is there in between. Okay. So, this gives an idea about, about what or how means HTML document will look like. There are some tags, well I have used some tags according to my need. And I can understand what the meanings of these tags are, but maybe you will not understand. So, the tags will be defined depending on the application which will be processing it or the person who will be viewing it or looking at it. Okay. This is the basic idea. So, talking about the structure of a XML document, there are five different components of the document, prologue, elements, attributes, entity references and comments. Let us see what these are. First is prologue. Prologue as I had said with the help of that example, that at the beginning you need to specify that this is an XML document, that is the prologue. It is the beginning or the starting of the document that tells you. The prologue has to be the first structural element that is present. First structural element means before that you can have comments. Comments are just like HTML, so there is no confusion there. You can have blank lines, but the first structural element will be the prologue. Prologue is sometimes divided in, into an XML declaration and an optional so called data type declaration that we shall see later. Some typical examples of prologue definition are this, the second version you have already seen earlier, the first version has an optional tag, this is the DTD I had said, this specifies some encoding rules, this is an XML file version 
it uses some encoding rules UTF-8. UTF-8 is a standard encoding rules where some special character can be encoded by some special escape sequences and the, and the like. So, that when you are processing it, just looking at the prologue you will understand that what kind of special characters and their encodings you are likely to encounter in the document. Okay. This XML elements are like tags. So, XML elements they are the most important form of markup or the way of specifying some sections of the document or text whatever you are correct you are doing or writing. Now, XML elements when you are using they must contain a start tag and a matching end tag just like HTML. You can say that in HTML the elements are predefined and we and you are calling them tags. So, begin tag, end tag, there are ways of doing it, end tag starts with a slash with the same name. So, here also that syntax remains the same. A small example, an element we are calling it city, end element slash city in between some text. Well, this text can be arbitrary, but in the context of context of XML, we understand that this Kharagpur is the name of a city. So, an application which is reading the data will understand that this Kharagpur is part of an element called city. So, the application understand that this is the name of a city. Okay. So, semantic is also captured here very nicely. And as I mentioned in that example, that if you have empty elements you can write them by putting a slash after the name of the element. Well, here alternatively you can also use both the tags without any content in between blank. And one thing to note is that unlike HTML, XML is case sensitive. So, when you are defining an element city, lower case C i T y and capital C i t y are not the same. You must follow the same case convention when you are using XML, when you are just using XML for some other applications. There is some naming convention for the element that means, when you define for example, I have given the name city. So, how you can define names? There are some simple rules. The rule says that the name must begin with an underscore or a letter let me say character a to z, but within the name you can have any number of letters, digits, underscore, hyphen and dots or periods. So, any combination of this will constitute the name of an element. So, so an element you can construct using any combination of these, there is something called attributes. This attributes are also quite similar to what is there in HTML. In HTML we had tags along with tags we had attributes. Whenever we have the begin tag along with the begin tag we specify the attributes. Here also we do something very similar. The syntax is very similar here also. Here the tags are called elements. So, we say that attributes are associated with elements. So, XML attributes are attached to elements. They are mostly name and value pairs that occur inside start tags like, like HTML after the element name. What I mean is that it is something like this. Suppose in this example, we have defined a element uh, whose name is faculty in this start faculty tag element you can say I have defined an attribute. The name of the attribute is NAME name and Indranil Shengupta is the value of that attribute. And within this I can have anything for example, here the body contains the email address, but it can contain anything. So, name value pairs will constitute attributes. So, this simple example shows that we have associated one attribute with 
this element faculty must begin with a letter or an underscore. The attribute name must not begin with anything else, this is the constraint and must not contain any white spaces. You cannot give any blank in between, this equal to before and after there should not be any blank. Well, entity references, see entity references actually mean that when you are creating a document you define some tags. Tags normally use less than greater than for defining tags. So, you use some of the symbols that are available in your alphabet that are available in the keyboard to define something special. Now, if in the document those same symbols are appearing, you normally use some kind of escape sequence to indicate that well this is that particular character and not the starting of a tag less than for example. Okay. So, the entity references as it is mentioned under XML actually talks about exactly that. They are used to reference data that are not directly in the structure, not directly in the structure means you cannot normally use those data or those symbols in the structure because they mean something else, but in order to use that you will have to do something else. Okay. So, there are two things this can be internal, this can be external, there are two ways of doing it. Okay. So, internal means uh, the entity references whatever you do that will define as part of the same file and external as the name implies this will be in some other file, but in addition to internal external there are other ways of mentioning we will see you through examples later. Uh, built in entity reference something internal external there is something built in is already there. Built in means these are some special symbols which you use in XML ampersand, less than, greater than, quotation, double quote and apostrophe, single quote. So, a small example follows suppose I have a string like this Tom and Jerry bracket quotation do not there is an apostrophe in between write x less than y quote bracket closed. Now, if you write a string like this, this ampersand double quote single quote less than this will thoroughly confuse the XML parser or processor because they have some other meaning to XML. So, you will have to escape out this using special escape sequences and specify it in a, in a slightly different way. The same text you will be writing like this instead of this ampersand symbol you will be writing ampersand amp semicolon. This ampersand is the escape sequence here all special symbols will start with ampersand then some name small short name followed by a semicolon. So, ampersand amp semicolon is this jerry then this quotation comes double quote this is ampersand q u o t ampersand uh, semicolon do not d o n then the single quote comes this is ampersand a p o s semicolon write x less than y less than is again l t double quote at the end this is q o t. So, in this way wherever there is a special symbol that you replace by an escape sequence which starts with ampersand followed by some short name for that particular symbol followed by a semicolon. This is the XML built in entity reference. Now, there is a special form of entity reference also which you can use this is called a so called character reference. Now, using character reference you can insert arbitrary characters in the documents. See you know uh, this unicode is a 16 bit character code which is which can be used to virtually represent any character in any language. Okay. So, this allows you to insert arbitrary unicode characters in the document, well I am giving a small example how to do that. You can specify the character code in either decimal or in hexadecimal, 
in decimal you do it in this way. It as usual starts with ampersand, this hash symbol indicates that this is this is a character reference followed by 8478 means the corresponding decimal equivalent of the unicode 16 bit number followed by semicolon. Hexadecimal is similar only you use an x before the hexadecimal number ampersand hash x 211 e. This two actually means the same number and this refers to the prescription symbol which the doctors give on the prescription that r a small x that r x is a special symbol that has a unicode value of 8478 in decimal. Okay. So, this is just an example which shows you if you give this r this means 8478 actually this prescription symbol will appear on the browser if you are viewing it on the browser screen. Then comes the comments, comments can be any text which starts with this particular pattern less than exclamation sign and followed by two minus signs dash and ending with dash dash slash. The only restriction is that you can contain any text in between excepting the two consecutive dash characters. Right? So, all the data that is present between these two tags will be ignored by the XML processor, they will be treated as comments. These are only for means human readability, readability and understandability of the document you have created, nothing to do with the XML processor. When the XML processor parses the file and sends the uh, you can say the values to the application along with the tags, these comments are totally ignored. Okay. Fine. There is something called processing instructions. When some values are sent, this processing instruction can be used to provide some additional information to an application. See, this additional information can be uh, of a number of different types. For example, just as I am giving a very simple example, suppose you have an image. For some image, you may want that the application should open it just using a BMP editor. Sometimes you may want that the, the application should open it through a JPEG viewer it is available. So, that value should be sent as a parameter, it is possible to send it, but whatever data you are actually sending as an image, but how the image you want the application to handle that additional information also you can add or you can incorporate with the definition. So, uh, this provides information to the application like comments they are also not textually part of the XML documents. XML document does not have bearing with this processing instruction. These are important only for the application which will be processing the HTML documents. Right? So, the XML processor will simply forward or pass them to the application that will be processing these processing instruction, but otherwise the XML processor has nothing to do with them directly. They have a syntax like this, less than question mark, these are special XML commands or tags you can say. Here you can give a name followed by some data. Now, for example, for the image as I told you, you can give the image type, you can give BMP or image type JPEG, this you can give as an additional information to the information to the application. So, so, so you can have as many as this kind of mm. processing instruction declarations as you need and you can have them to make the application behave in a way you want. There are a number of processing instructions that start with XML. However, they are reserved. This as a user you are not allowed to use, they are reserved for particular use for certain particular applications. 
Okay. C data section is sometimes used in XML to bracket out a portion which you do not want to you can say use escape sequences in like the C data section in XML it instructs the XML parser to ignore the markup characters that are appearing there because otherwise those markup characters will be replaced by the escape sequences. A very small example is given here. Here I have a small segment of C code which contains some special symbols like asterisk like uh, less than which may have some other meaning to XML. This asterisk normally do not have meaning this less than has. So, for, so, if you put it in the C data section this is how you put in less than exclamation square bracket C data again another square bracket begin at the end double square bracket ending and a greater than. So, if you give it in this way whatever is enclosed all special symbols like less than will be retained as it is they will not be replaced by the corresponding escape sequences. So, particularly when you are composing some program text or something you, you really do not want them to be replaced by something else you try to retain them. So, C data section can be useful in those cases. So, all character data in between is passed to the application without any interpretation that means you do not try to interpret them. For example, within the C data section there can be some ampersand symbol also. Normally what the XML parser will do? whenever the XML parser sees an ampersand symbol, XML parser will try to see what follows that, that is a special character definition and it will try to replace it by something else. But here nothing is replaced, verbatim whatever is present is being sent to the application within the C data section. Okay. Next comes document type declarations or DTD. So, XML as we had seen that through element declarations it, it allows us to create our own tag names. Document type declarations allows a document to send meta information to the parser about its contents. Meta information means that uh, you send some semantic information to the parser that well these are the tags and this is the meaning of the tag, this is how you should interpret the tag this kind of meta information can also be sent. Like, like means I am giving a simple example, you think of a browser, browser is one very classic example of an XML application, an application that is using a XML specification, a web page written in XML that is being downloaded, the browser tries to display it, browser is now an application. So, browser is using an XML parser to extract some important uh, information from the XML specification and try to display them in a proper way. Now, DTD document type declarations are very useful. Without document type declaration, the browser will not know that how to display this particular item on the screen, bold, centered, underlined or how. Okay. DTDs are important due to this. It also tells you that if there is any importance in the sequencing and ordering of the tags, this also may be mentioned that tags must appear in this particular sequence, you cannot have any arbitrary usage of tags. Okay. Now, broadly four kinds of declarations are then XML, you can define elements, you can define attributes associated with the elements, you define something called entities and notations. These are the four different kinds of definitions that we encounter in XML specifications. Let us see, first is element type declaration. They identify the names of the elements and the nature of the contents. Means earlier we had seen what an element is and how you can use an element in an XML document that, that city Kharagpur and city that was one example. Now, here we see how we can define an element in an XML document. Elements identify the names of the elements and the nature of their content. 
So, I told you in XML there is no predefined element or tag everything I need I will have to define myself. Okay? So, this is a way of defining. So, elements can contain simple predefined data types, they can refer to other elements, they can also be defined with respect to their cardinality. Cardinality means how many times the element appears in the XML document, because I may say that a particular document city should not appear in the document more than 20 times or it is unbounded, it can appear any number of times. These kind of specifications I can also mention. So, a small example, this defines a, an element whose name is faculty. XSD colon element is the keyword we use to define elements name equal to the name of the element you are trying to define, then type there are several predefined types under XSD again, XSD colon string means it is a string, max occurs is another attribute which says that it is an unbounded. That means, there are no limit to the number of times the faculty element can appear in my XML document. Okay? So, in this way you can define the elements. Next comes attributes, how to define the attributes associated with the elements. Like elements attributes must, must also have a name and type, attribute can use custom data type also. They can also be restricted with respect to cardinality as I mentioned before and also some default values you can specify. They can also refer to other attribute definitions like one small example follows here. This XSD attribute, this keyword tells you that you are, you are trying to define an attribute. The name of the attribute is city, type is again string, fixed Kharagpur means this is a default value and this is a restricted value, you cannot change it. But if you do not give this, then anyone can use any kind of city by default. For example, you are you are, you are creating an XML document that is keeping track of all the bank branches in Kharagpur. So, for them the city will always be Kharagpur, you can define them as a fixed type, fixed equal to Kharagpur. For them this kind of declarations are relevant. Entity, entity will allow us to associate a name with some other fragment or content. Like we had already seen internal entities like you are replacing some special characters by their escape sequences. This is one example of entity. That means, it is like a macro substitution, you have something you replace with it with, with, uh, with something else and later on when you again need it back, you again replace it back. It is like a macro substitution and desubstitution. This is sometimes called an entity with which some string or something else is associated, you replace the entity by that string. Okay. So, so, essentially it, uh, it means the same thing, it is like a macro substitution, you have a symbol or a string, you are replacing it with by some other string. These are internal entities which you can define as part of the XML. External entities are those which associates a name with the contents of another file. This is also like a macro, but you replace it with something which is not there in your XML file that has to be brought from somewhere else. So, that somewhere else once you fetch it, the contents of that will be inserted at the point of reference. There is one simple example I am giving. Here I am defining an entity, entity IIT logo. This is the name of the entity I am giving. I am saying system is a keyword followed by a link which tells you where this logo is found. This is a URL, this is actually a URL institute slash logo dot gif. 
So, now in my XML wherever I use this IIT logo entity that will get replaced by that GIF file, GIF image. Okay. This is a very convenient way of replacement and this external entity will allow you to do it from some other file not from the same document. Notation declaration is another thing which sometimes simplifies the task of the application. So, using notations you can identify some specific types of external binary data. Instead one example will illustrate, take this example. This is how we define a notation definition. This is the name you are giving GIF 87, this is an image format you know system. This is a very complex image format 87, the name is this is the complex string, but you tell the application that it is nothing but a GIF image, you can open it using any GIF image viewer program. Okay. So, the name may be any complex thing, but you give some, some kind of additional information to the application using this notation that well this you can denote by this, this is a shorter form of this. This kind of short, short, shorter form notation is the most typical use of notation declarations. Okay. Now, let us see how we can document, uh, uh, so means we have created a document, how we can link a document to other documents. Just like we can use hyperlinks in HTML, means we have a document, we can define an anchor, we can provide a link to some other portion of the document or to some other document. So, in XML how do we do that? XML in itself does not have this feature, so you need either the X pointer or the X link specifications which I had mentioned earlier. These are some kind of a standard linking model for XML. So, we specifically look at some of the features of X link. Now, well using X link you can define hyperlink, but it is something more than the kind of hyperlink you use in HTML it also gives you control over the semantics of the link. Semantic means the meaning, means, means in HTML semantic is only one, you, you click something comes to you, that is the only meaning. Your, your URL which you are clicking the hyperlink that corresponds to some other document which is located on the web server, that is it. But here it can be something more it may not be something to do with you have to bring something from the web server and view it on the screen, because, because it may not be an internet application at all, it can be something more general. Okay. So, let us see. So, for this purpose uh, they have introduced something called extended links, we will give an example for this. Extended link can involve more than two resources. The conventional link or hyperlink involves two resources from one you provide a link to the other, but extended link can involve several resources together. Okay. And XML processors can identify this X link declarations by the special keyword XML colon link. Okay. Let us see how we can do this. First let us look at simple link. Simple link is very similar to the HTML anchor tag, which provides normal hyperlinks. You start with a link, link is a, well this is an this is XML specification, link is, a, this is an element, XML link is the name, which you specify simple, this is a simple link which is followed by the text or the URL which is clickable, then the actual clickable text. So, this is the URL followed by our institute homepage is the clickable text. Now, this simple link 
actually identifies the link between the present resource and the resource whose, whose, whose URL is given here www.iitkgpac.in. So, this is very much similar to the HTML link, link mechanism, but when you look at extended links you will see that it is something more. So, this XML is not something to do only with viewing documents uh, on the browser and clicking them to get something else. Okay. So, extended links as I mentioned they allow us to express relationships between more than two resources. So, for this you use the e link tag and you specify the attribute XML link as extended and you use another tag inside e link called locator. You see you are using two locators well two I have shown it can be more also it can be more than two for a single e link. Now, this now within this locator you specify XML link equal to locator, locator is a keyword, some document you specify and also some text. Now, it depends on the interpretation, this is not for the conventional browsers, some browser may interpret it as follows if, if that browser is your target application that in two different frames you will be displaying the two links together simultaneously. You click one link, you go to two different places together and the two different things are getting displayed side by side on two different windows. So, these kind of a things are possible if we go for extended links. So, it is a much more generalization of the conventional link whereby a document is getting linked to some other document through a single link. Another issue is white spaces like HTML white spaces are ignored by the XML processor, but however, there is an attribute XML colon space using which you can make white space significant. See on any element where you want to make it significant for example, a paragraph you are defining a paragraph on the element that corresponds to the paragraph you include this attribute xml space equal to preserve. If you give this then within the paragraph all spaces will be preserved otherwise all spaces will get ignored. Okay. So, this is a way of you can say retaining white spaces. Sometimes we may want to include a document type description definition along with an xml document there is a way to do this. First is that in the prologue you specify that this is not a standalone document, standalone equal to yes is the default. You say that this document depends on some other document for proper interpretation. Okay. So, this is not a standalone document, so standalone you say as no and here you specify the corresponding document type definition DTT. This is the way to specify this doc type chapter system this my book dot DTD is the file where all the description of the elements and attributes are present. So, all the definitions you have put there in one place in a separate file and in this XML file you are including them instead of repeating the definition every time in every XML you can simply include them as a DTD. Okay. So, this is the syntax and after this uh, your this chapter type gets defined just like a document type. This is a document type of chapter. So, now you start with begin chapter end chapter in between whatever tags you have defined you can use them in between. This is just an indication of, of how you can use a DTD. Now, XML documents can be categorized as well formed if it obeys all the syntax of, H of XML and if it obeys the syntax it can be parsed. You can have another level of you can say well formedness it is called valid, valid says it, it will be well formed no doubt, 
but it will also contain a proper DTD and the document follows all the constraints of the DTD. So, it is something more just the syntax some semantic is also included then we call it a valid document. Okay. Now, standard XML language there have been many attempts as I told you that XML is used not only for creating images or documents for web pages, but for many other application. Some I am just telling very quickly synchronized multimedia integration language SMIL this have been used for combining audio video text in a synchronized fashion for some applications. Scalable vector graphics SVG this has been used for two dimensional graphic specification. Mathematical markup language MathML this has been used for capturing mathematical equations. Wireless markup language is very popular this is used for handheld devices like PDAs and cell phones. Chemical markup language CML used for, for specifying molecular structures and open financial exchange OFX is used for describing financial transactions. So, you can see that there are so many different applications and in this lecture we have tried to discuss just touch on the basic features given some examples to tell you that means, what are the features and how they can be used in an XML application, but in reality XML is much more than that XML is an open language depending on your application you can use it in whatever you, you can. Okay. So, with this we come to the end of today's lecture let us uh, quickly go through the solutions of the previous lecture. What are the HTML tags associated with table definitions? These were the four tags table th, td, tr. How do you specify table entries spanning multiple columns? This we had seen using the row span and the column span attributes. This you can use with td and also th. What is the purpose of frame set? To define a collection of frames and the frame tag can be embedded inside the frame. No frames, what is the purpose? To handle browsers that do not support frames. What does star signify? Star signify or specify the relative value with respect to the available space. I told you in the previous class there is difference between star, 2 star, 3 star. Relatively, you can define the widths or the sizes of the frames. What does percent signify? Percent is the percentage of the available space, okay. the sum total must add up to 100. What is inline style with an example? Inline style is one where the style is specified inline as part of the document. This is one H2, this one example I had given, this example. What is external style? External style is one where the style description are present in a separate document and a link to that document is specified here. And some questions for today's lecture. What is a markup language? What are the three main specifications defining XML? Give an example of an XML element, how can an empty element be specified? What is an XML attribute? Give an example. Using entity reference, how will this string, this particular string be represented? How do you insert comments in XML? Why is the C data section used? What do element type declaration do? What do attribute list declaration do? Give an example of simple link. How do you specify extended links in XML? How do you retain white spaces in the document? Now, with this uh, we, we come to the end of the present module on the creation of web pages. In the next few lectures in our next module would be talking about how we can create something called interactive or dynamic web pages or web content. Thank you. Uh, in this module that we are going to start now, 
will be having four lectures and here we will be talking about the different ways of designing interactive web pages. Uh, here in the first lecture today I will be talking about HTML forms, in the next lecture we will be talking about something called image maps, after that CGI scripts or common gateway interface followed by some other technologies uh, which are also similar and competing. Uh, first let us try to understand what is meant by an interactive web page. See normally the conventional web page whatever we see, we type in an URL or click a text which points to a URL, the page from that URL gets fetched and it is displayed on my screen. I am sure all of you are familiar with the search engines people use, that means we need something I do not know where it is I use the search engines, Google, Yahoo these are very popular search, in, search, in, search engines today. Now what I am trying to say is that suppose I give something for search to Google, suppose I say I want to search for HTML. So, there is a small white box I type HTML, I press search and after some time Google gives me a big list of places where I can go for more information about HTML. Now, what I see on my screen now is a page which Google has sent to me, that page contains a number of information all containing information about HTML links to HTML, but is it the case that this page was stored somewhere in the Google server and after my request that page have been sent to me. See this is not possible because what the user will be giving for searching that Google cannot predict, there can be millions of possibilities. I can give searching HTML, I can give hypertext markup language. I can give HTML form, I can do so many things. So, a more logical approach would be that Google stores this thing somewhere in a database, depending on the user's request that gets fetched from the database the information and they get dynamically formed into an HTML document and sent it back to me. This is what interactive page means that the page is not residing as it is on the server, but depending on the request it gets created and is sent back. Okay. Now, HTML